I've been a minimalist for years and over time I have realized that my lifestyle includes some quite unique things that might seem a bit unconventional to others. While these habits or practices very much align with my minimalist values, they might appear a bit strange, especially for non-minimalists. But I think some of these can still seem a bit weird even if you are a minimalist yourself. Let's get to the number one and that is that I avoid freebies. In Finland people go really crazy about any sort of freebie. Anything that you can get for free, people absolutely want to have it. Here people have waited for like hours to get something that is basically worthless, like a plastic bucket that has a logo of some certain supermarket for example and why people love freebies it's because they are free and that's what they say why wouldn't you get it if it's free but i think that there is cost to anything of course there's the time that you wait to get it but also there's the cost in your home you need to store it somewhere and i say no to this because i want to avoid the clutter so many times we don't actually need these things they don't serve any practical purpose but we just take them because they are free then they basically just end up being clutter in our house so for example if you are participating in some event and they are giving away for free these tote bags which is quite common i think if you already have three of those at your home and you rarely use them and you definitely don't need another then why to take even a new one i actually made a little mistake <laughs> with this this week i was in this running event and they were giving away these running hats or caps and i use those for every run and i took one because i liked it a lot but then i realized later actually i already have an own one so i shouldn't have just taken it like that because i liked it and because it was was for free i should have thought before okay do i need this and now when i have a new one what will i do with the old one because i don't really need two of them so i might just end up decluttering the one so good reminder as well for myself that even if something is for free it doesn't mean that you should just automatically get it number two i regularly evaluate every piece of clothing i have for me this has become a very automatic or automated process by now i don't anymore need to set up a specific time and date to go through my clothes and see what i still use and what is valuable to me and what is not I just do it every time when I go to my closet or wardrobe because I like to keep most of my things as well as well visible there that when I'm choosing clothes for today I already know that okay I haven't used this in a while should I then let this go or not. For me the primary reason to do this is because I don't want unnecessary stuff in my house or unnecessary clothes that I don't even wear and I don't like. They don't serve any purpose in my life. Because I have noticed that when I have too many items, when I just keep things there just for the sake of keeping them, I tend to lose the appreciation for everything that I have or other clothes as well because there's just too many of them. So if I don't feel a strong desire to keep or use an item, I would much rather donate it to somebody who actually needs it, who could wear and love that piece of clothing much more than I do. I guess this is nothing new to you if you're a minimalist, but I think for non-minimalists this might sound a little bit weird. That if you have the space there for your clothes or for any clothes, why wouldn't you just fill up the space? But I just think a little bit differently in this one. Number three, I store my groceries in the supermarket. Instead of doing this big grocery runs where I stock up on everything, I visit my local grocery store twice or even three times per week where I buy food just for the next couple of days. I'm able to do this because I have the grocery store a few minutes away from my house and for me this helps me to stay and keep my fridge so much more organized. Everything there is kind of clutter free and I know what I should eat next. Nothing really goes ever forgotten and therefore is spoiled and I cannot eat it and I have to trash it so I avoid so much food waste doing this. There are also a couple of more reasons why I do this. For example, I rarely pay the full price anymore because I go there so often, I know what groceries, what foods have good offers and then I just take advantage of those all the time. This really helps me to keep my grocery expenses in check. And also these are really like mindful breaks for me. It's a time for myself. When I go there, I can take my time. It's a nice walk as well outside. It's kind of like a mental reset. I could buy food for it all week or even two weeks and store them in my fridge. But why would I do that when the supermarket can store the food for me? 
Number four, I can easily spend hundreds on one thing but want to save two dollars on another. As weird as this may sound, it comes down to three different reasons. The first one is priorities and values. As a minimalist, I prioritize my spending on things that are aligned with my core values and priorities. So for example, on new headphones that I know that I need to, for example, create these videos. And then in high quality running shoes that might cost hundreds, but I know that I really need those for my health. And then for example, coaching, that is something that I invest every month money in because I know that that is fast tracking my process to basically anything new that I want to learn. The second reason is knowing what is actually valuable. I really like to invest in things that are built to last, that I don't have to buy the same thing again and again. I can just buy it once and that thing is so high quality that it will last. And also talking about what is valuable and what is quality, sometimes things are expensive, but the return that you get from them are much higher. So in some online courses, I have invested a lot of money, but the return what I got to my life was so much higher than the price that I invested that I know that even if the price is high, the return is even higher. And the third one is needs versus wants. I really try to be thoughtful to understand what is a want for me, what I just desire, but what is something that I actually need. And if it's a, an actual need, then for me, there's not really a limit that, okay, I can only spend this amount to that because if it's a need, then it's a need. So if I can invest hundreds in some needs, then when it comes to a want, for example, drinking a soda in a restaurant or even buying from a grocery store, I don't do that because I know that that is a want and I don't necessarily need that. So I would much rather drink just water that is free or thrifting clothes instead of buying new ones or cycling to somewhere instead of buying a bus ticket because I can save that two or three dollars from that bus ticket and even get a good exercise if I go there by bike. Of course, I allow myself sometimes these ones as well, but I think doing a lot of this little savings, saving just two dollars so, so many times allows me to make stress-free big investments also to some other things. Number five, I don't watch TV series or TV shows. I primarily just watch movies or documentaries because they offer a complete experience within a set time frame. I may sometimes watch these limited series, but usually I try to avoid them as well because my goal is to minimize the exposure to this content that may potentially lead to binge watching, which I find very difficult to control. I get so hooked easily to things, especially TV shows. I get so into the story that I just cannot stop. And this means that I start to lose control of other things and time and my life and my priorities. And this is not something that I really want in my life. So this behavior is really like an addict behavior that I get a good feeling when I watch the first episodes. But then once I continue that, I just feel very neutral, but if I stop watching, I just start to feel so stressed and bad and that I need to continue. And this feeling of dissatisfaction is something that I really don't like and I don't have to watch these TV series or shows, so I much prefer to not even start them then. Of course, I don't think that there's anything wrong with watching them if you can just keep it to one or two episodes per day and can control it very easily, but I just cannot. They take away me from my goals of living in the present moment and feeling peaceful. Number six, I take multiple walks every day and I will explain in a second why this might seem a little bit weird. So usually these walks are just in my neighborhood and last around 5 to 15 minutes. I use these walks very similarly to how recess works in school. So there's a time between studying or working to kind of declutter your mind and clear your thoughts. And why this might seem weird is because these frequent short walks around the neighborhood is usually something that the pet owners do. People usually don't associate this with just personal wellness. So every time I go out, I meet a lot of these dog owners and they might think that it's a little bit weird seeing me three times a day outside and I never have a dog. If they don't really understand that these walks are as well good for us humans, they might think that what is this guy 
doing every day here just walking around just looking at the sky and stopping every now and then and listening to some random sounds or whatever they might think that i'm the weirdo of the neighborhood number seven i do cleaning and tidying up as a relaxing activity i think to many people these are more associated with stress rather than something that is relaxing but for me they just create more peace and they're kind of these soothing activities rather than something that creates frustration or nervousness stress but it wasn't always like this only after i understood the benefits and the mental clarity that i can gain from doing these activities I started to enjoy them. Cleaning and tidying up allow me to relax and unwind, kind of clear my mind and my thoughts. It's like meditation. It's really a mindful moment when I'm doing this. I don't care about the things getting clean or getting tidy or getting done. I'm just enjoying the process of it. When I'm not going out, I usually do this during my breaks and I think that that is so much better habit for the breaks than just scrolling your phone for five or ten minutes if you want to know more and maybe some reasons why i became a minimalist make sure to watch this video next thank you so much for watching remember to stay kind and meaningful in your own beautiful journey see you in the next one